Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Carol and today I've prepared a slightly different video than usual. I wanted to guide you through a process of how I create a short film, give you some tips and tricks. It's gonna be pretty basic, don't expect too much, but I still think you will find some of the information insightful. I will take as an example the last video that I've made for a board filmmaker challenge. I think, yeah, pretty catchy name. That was a single shot video, or at least it was pretending to be a single shot video. If you didn't see it, link in the description, but I will also show you the final result on the end of this one. So when you create a video like this, I think the most important is to have a story, like to have some kind of an idea that you want to pursue in the video. You want to plan it before and then execute it, and then trust me, it's going to be much better. I wanted to show different things that we are doing when we are bored at home, but also give it a feel that we are exploring the house with a camera. Therefore, first thing that I thought about is what rooms might be interesting and then made a test run. So I literally took the camera, went from one room to another and was thinking, where can I hide the cuts? Thanks to editing the test run, I knew exactly what I want from my shots. I knew what I should be careful about and I also realized that the whole video was a bit too long. As you can imagine, after I did a test run, recording the whole thing didn't took that long, it was about an hour I think, but most of the time I spent in the video editing software. Let's jump right into it. First thing that I do after opening a new project is to create a pin. Let's call it footage. Then I import all of the videos that I've recorded and put it in a folder. I select the list view and here I can see the frame rate, 24 frames per second and I can also see the video info. Those information will be important later on. If you can't see them, right click on name, metadata display and type what you're looking for. Make sure that the box is ticked. Then I create a new sequence, new item sequence and then you match your video settings to the sequence settings. It is important to keep the same frame rate as your original footage. However, you can play around a bit with the dimensions. I will decrease the vertical value to give it a more cinematic look. You can just Google the dimensions based on your preferences. Then you name a sequence and press OK. I go to my footage folder and choose the best shot. As you can see, I've recorded the same scene a couple of times. From what I remember, the first one was the best one. Double click on a video and press I to mark the beginning of the video that you want to import to the sequence. Okay, I'll set I somewhere here. Then click O on the keyboard to mark the end of the clip. Somewhere here. Okay, out. Then I drag and drop it to the sequence and keep existing settings. We don't want to mess up our settings that we chose earlier. Then let's make it a bit bigger. This looks pretty good. The only thing that I would change is I would move it a bit up just to give a bit of space above Darius' head. I don't know if you've noticed, but the image looks quite shaky. Let's fix that. So go to effects and type in warp and drag and drop it to the clip. Now, if you would go to effect controls, you can see that it is analyzing in the background. I would suggest to change smoothness to somewhere around 20 to 30%. From my experience, 50 is a bit too much and it tends to give weird results. After your computer is done analyzing, you can double check if you like the outcome. You can hardly notice, but the image distorts for a second. Let's try to fix it. First thing that we need to do is to cut this clip into two. On Mac, you can use the shortcut Command K. Next, you will need to delete the warp stabilizer effect from the first clip. A cheeky way to match those two clips would be to take the first one and put it on top of the other and extend it so they overlap. Then we change opacity to 50%. Thanks to that, we see two images, one on top of the other, and we can align them perfectly. Okay, this is good. Okay, this looks pretty good to me. So now cut it back, change the opacity. Yeah, I'm happy with the results. 
Once we are done with these clips, let's put them up just so we can make space for a second one. As you can see the shot starts with an empty bed. This is because Dory is already waiting in another room with another scene. Let's take it somewhere from here, just before the white thing goes on the screen. Okay, this looks pretty good. Dory is playing piano and then the end out. Cool. We need to move it a bit. In here we can see the door, we want to avoid it, so let's cut this clip. Okay, now we can see motion is still doubled. Okay. Okay, that looks good to me. So what I did here is I used the simple cut to match those two clips. Okay, let's see here. Again, let's adjust our framing. A bit down, double check if this is still seamless. Awesome, let's choose another clip and here I'll show you a different technique which is called masking. This is because I didn't shoot it exactly how I want it and I need to fix it in post. So here we have a clip with a cat. I'll take the shot somewhere from here in. Okay, and that's about right, out. Okay, let's put it here. And as you can see, those shots are not transitioning well at all. So what I will do is firstly, create a mask in the first shot, opacity, then pantle, then I create a mask. Four points are enough in this scenario. To animate the mask, we click on the toggle next to the mask path and create the first keyframe. Then mask feather, I'll put it to, let's say 50, as it creates feather around the mask and it helps to transition with another shot. Let's click on mask, go to the second one, adjust our mask. Next one. I go frame by frame and adjust the mask until the wall is gone. Okay, this is good. We need to put the end of the clip where our mask starts so we don't have any black bars. Okay, this is good. And as you can see, that already looks much better. Okay, I'll just scale this. 140% should be okay. You can adjust the framing by clicking on motion and moving around the video. Okay, so we've learned two transitions. The first one was a hard cut, second masking. And since those were the only transitions that I've used in this video, I will fast forward till I'm done with a basic edit. To make our lives easier and our timeline more transparent, I will now nest all of the videos, so put them in another composition, just so we have one long clip. Right click, nest. After putting everything together, the video didn't give the vibe that I wanted it to give. It felt like creepy Daria is standing right next to the desk and that's not the feeling that I wanted to give. I wanted the outside to be dangerous. So what I did is I recorded another clip and then with After Effects pasted Daria into the window. If you're interested in how I did that, leave the comment below. Final result looked like this. By the way, if you have a slow computer like I do, I would encourage you to render the files before you play them. In order to do that, you would need to change one shortcut. Go to Premiere Pro, Keyboard Shortcuts, and under Return, make sure that you select Render Entire Work Area. And now when you click Enter, it will render the whole clip. Once computer is done rendering your file, it will show you a green bar on top of your video and it will play your video automatically. After completing the edit, it's now important to focus on the sound. I start with the background noise. Most typically it comes just from the camera microphone. Since I always struggle to find a copyright free music, I finally invested in Epidemic Sound. I browse it from time to time and save songs to my playlist so I don't need to waste time when I'm ready to shoot a video. For this one I used this Clockmasters tune. And the key here was to sing the dramatic part of the music with the Creepy Daria entrance. And I think at this stage video looks pretty good already. However, to make it even better, we will add some sound design to it. Let's visit my favorite website. 
freesound.org. Here you can create a free account and look for sounds that will make your video more appealing. Let's look for example for Whoosh. Oh, I like this one. All you need to do is to download the sound and import it to your project. Then let's find the transition moment and drag and drop the sound. With sound design, the sky is the limit. The more effects, the better the result. Okay, so after another hour, I have a sound design ready and the thing that I like to leave for the end is color grading. For this particular video, I'm not gonna color grade too much simply because I'm a bit in rush. So all I need to do is to create a new item adjustment layer. How I like to think about adjustment layers is that this is a transparent video on top of your video that takes every effect that you put on it and applies it to the everything that is below it. So let's jump to the metric color. This will help us color grade, a bit more contrast. Let's say 40. We can check on Lumetri scopes is if it's touching zero or 100. That's normally not very good. Adjusting the highlights, the shadows, the whites, and the blacks. Oh, they touched. This looks pretty good to me. And in Creative tab, I also sharpen the image a bit, so to 20%. I normally double check if it looks good over the entire video. And then the last step, but pretty important, is exporting your video. You need to select your sequence that you want to export. Press on File, Export, Media. I normally match the sequence settings by default. Here I scroll to render at maximum depth and target bitrate. I put it to 50. I choose where I want to render the file, click save and export. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for staying till the end. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Let me know if you would like me to continue doing them. Cheers!